Hi and welcome. Today I will talk about uh, square taper bottom brackets, uh, their axle length. That is something that I hear a lot of people asking when they have, a, when they need to place or replace a bottom bracket for with a square taper standard. So this is what I have in mind. How long an axle should they choose? There are different standards, and Shimano bottom brackets for me have been a good choice, the best bang for the buck and they come in 110, 113, 115 millimeters, 117, 122, 27 and so on. So what length should you choose? Uh, that question, if you buy a Shimano uh, cranks, a set of Shimano cranks, they usually have it written on the package what length of their cartridge square bottom square taper bottom brackets will fit for a certain chain line. They note, note that chain line as well. But the answer is not that simple. To answer it right away, it's a trial and error. You need to establish it at least once to see which is the optimal length and then when you buy replacements, at least with the Shimano, you know which one to go for. So, uh, simply put, if you are not in a position to get several different lengths and give it a try, you might go to a bicycle shop, have them establish the optimal length and then write it down or measure the old one when you need to replace and then you will know which one to get. Of course, if you change your cranks, it might differ. Uh, however, I will explain here the basics, what to look out for and how to establish what is the optimal length. First thing, this taper is not the same for European ISO standard and for Japanese JIS standard. Japanese are at a bit more uh, severe angle. They uh, broaden a bit more severely as they go towards the mi middle. So you will often see cranks that uh, fit a lot uh, higher up uh, an ISO a square taper will fit not as high on a JIS, on a Shimano or other uh, square taper of that standard. So that is one thing to, to have in mind. Checking if my mic is on. <laughs> it happens. Okay, so that's one thing to have in mind. And another thing is what you want to achieve. And I chose this because here we have a very good example. Uh, briefly to explain what the chain line is. If I don't forget, I'll make a link to my article explaining chain line uh, pop up in your top right corner. So, what is chain line? You want the midsection of your cassette, as you look it, at, it, at its distance from the bicycle's longitudinal central axis. So, how far away from that center line is the center of the cassette? Not any particular sprocket. If you have an even amount of sprockets, like 6 or 12, it will be between two sprockets. If you have an odd number of sprockets, then, for example, for 7 speeds, it will be exactly at the middle of the fourth sprocket, roughly speaking. But uh, you want that center line to be aligned uh, between the cassette and the same center line of your cranks. If you have triples, it the center line is the mid section of the mid uh, crank uh, uh, chain ring and if you have a double it is right between the two chain rings so you want those two se uh, center lines to be aligned that's like a perfect chain line however you might want also to get a bit off from that in this example for reasons that would take a separate video i have opted to put a modern compact crank and that is 50 teeth on the larger chainring and 34 teeth on the smaller. I'm building this bike for myself, finally. <laughs> and uh, because I will do most of the riding on the 52 chainring, on the 50 tooth chainring, the 34 is very small, it only works for me on the long steep climbs. I want this to be as close to the inner side of the bicycle as possible so that I don't cross chain a lot 
when I'm using the larger sprockets on the cassette that are closer to the to the bicycle center line, to the inner side. I hope I've explained that properly. So I will be uh, looking for this to be like in the middle of the cassette, if possible. What are the limits? First thing, if I put an, uh, an axle that is too short, I might have the cranks hitting the chain stays or hitting them when I'm pedaling under load and there is some flexing in the frame. I might also have the inner chain ring scratching against the chain stay as it widens, so that is another problem. And also, I might have problems with the front derailleur not being able to move close enough to the frame in order to uh, make a shift to the smallest sprocket. So that is the limit of how close to the frame I can go. With that in mind, based on my previous experience, I would expect the length of the, the axle that fits to be somewhere between around 113 millimeters, maybe 115, maybe 113. However, I will first give it a go with 110. With a bit of luck, I might get the cranks to be seated nicely and work and still be close enough and I will also have to test it with the front derailleur to see if it works. And first thing that I would do is to just mount the, the crank onto this and see if it slides already too far upwards. This doesn't look bad. There's enough engagement, I should be able to make it work. And for the left hand side, there's even more room to spare. So you can see here how much space I have. So I should expect to get enough engagement here so it boils down to the front derailleur and whether it fits. I will try to mount it and show if I run into any problems and put the camera so that you can see the, the potential problematic parts. I've already made videos about mounting bottom brackets, so I'm not sure if this is worth recording now, but I will make a video timeline in the video's description and visible on the timeline, so like chapters, so you can skip to the parts of interest and uh, not have to put up with, uh, with a long, tedious, boring video. <laughs> Just uh, double check before we do anything. Okay, I am stupid. Officially, this is Italian bottom brackets. Bracket, it's over 35 millimeters. So, this one will not fit definitely. Yeah, it's written. It's written on it. Okay. So we have an Italian bottom bracket. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, I will make a hop to a shop, it rhymes, and try to get a British standard bottom bracket for the 110 millimeter length and try first with that one, just in case. This one is 113, okay, let's give it a try with 113 millimeters just to check how it fits. There seems to be plenty of room. I would expect this to climb for at least half a centimeter closer to the chain stay and the, both for the, the crank and for the, the chain rings, but there seems to be plenty of room with the 113 millimeter bottom bracket. So I will give it a go with 110 
maybe even try to find one that is uh, shorter like 107 or the closest one that I can find with a shorter standard and then see if that will give me some room to play this one will definitely provide me with enough clearance for the front chainring to move close enough to to change gears but also for the for the cranks not to hit anything so i'll give it a test and uh, see how it goes but that is the the principle as for measuring the chain line i have an article explaining that in detail so i won't be bothering you with that in this video especially since here i'm deliberately trying to go with a small chain line for the front as possible so i'm not trying to aim for the middle of the cassette and that's it thank you for watching i hope this video helps you i hope it's informative but uh, I, I would like to be able to say always go with a certain size but in my experience it's always a trial and error with all this being said for some rough general guides for people who need to buy only uh, who are in a position to only buy and try it rhymes uh, one uh, axle length uh, roughly generally speaking for shimano triple cranks 122 to 123 millimeters usually does the job with shimano bottom brackets i'm not 100 percent sure about the others but for Shimano bottom brackets for mountain bikes, 122 to 123 millimeters, whichever you find, sometimes it's 122.5. Those are usually okay. Or a number smaller, like 117, if you want it closer to the frame. Uh, longer ones, 127, are usually make it too far out and needlessly, both having the pedals too wide out and having the chain rings too, too far out. For doubles, it's usually about 110 to 113 millimeters, rarely longer, rarely need, you rarely need 115 millimeters. So the first that I would give it a go with would probably be 113, just to make sure that it's not going to be too close if I can only buy one. But otherwise I would give it a go with 110, which I, I almost did here and with a shorter one just in case just for good measure 107 i right now don't have either of those there's always uh, problems with parts especially in the last few years <laughs> with serbia it's always <laughs> in the last three decades so i'll see what's available and try to get this working as as good as possible for single for only one uh, one chain ring you can expect to go for about 110 to 107 millimeters uh, often so usually but not always you will go with shorter ones even though some cranks are not anywhere near those sometimes you need 115 for a single speed chaining depending on the the cranks model the the bicycles chain line the rear chain line and so on so yeah, it, it's always best to give it a try to have different lengths and and then see what works and give it a bit of a test and the only way to try that is by using different different kinds of brackets of cartridges so you can't <laughs> edit it otherwise you can try adding some washers before you mount the the right hand side cranks to get it protruding a bit outwards but then your left hand side crank will be a bit closer to the frame so it will not be symmetrical with most cranks sometimes you need to do that to get them symmetrical if you have some strange cranks but generally uh, it's not a good idea so that's it i hope this video helps you thank you for watching and cheers